If you're a silver and gold stacker, sooner or later you're going to encounter some form of fake silver. But really, at the end of the day, what does it take to pull a fast one on you? Well, it might be easier than you think, and uh, you might overestimate your abilities as far as uh, finding that fake silver. So, interestingly, my experience with fake silver actually happened on the very front end of my stocking journey. So, long story short, I used to be in a position where I would see large quantities of physical coinage, uh, bills, all of that stuff. Uh, and so I was always on the lookout for, you know, rare coins and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Silver content, anything like that. And so one day I saw a coin where I was like, huh, that is obviously very different. Stuck out right away. And I was like, I was pretty excited about it. So I decided, all right, I'm going to buy that coin. So I did. I basically traded it for its uh, monetary equivalent. Basically, think of it like this. If it was in a uh, stack of, you know, 50 cent pieces, then I just traded it out for 50 cents. But anyway, uh, I ended up pulling that coin out and really taking a look at it. So the first thing I did was, you know, go Google it. But uh, here it is. So this was actually the first fake silver that I ever encountered and it was particularly exciting because or I mean at the time before I knew it was fake was because I'm looking at it and I'm thinking well that's an old coin very interesting that's got to be you know something that's pretty collectible especially given the dates I'm like oh well that's uh again interesting time period right around the Civil War very interesting piece now at the time didn't really know much about silver didn't really know much about stacking uh, I had you know made a few purchases of silver bars things like that but as far as coinage didn't know how to tell uh, you know what was real what wasn't and so the interesting thing was uh, you know the only thing I could find online really was that the tap test to, to hear the sound of silver but uh, you know the interesting part for me was that I didn't really have an idea of what silver coinage should sound like, especially constitutional. So I was like, uh, the tap test really isn't working for me. So another test that it, or another way to tell that it uh, said online was to put a piece of toilet paper over it. And I forget whether it, if you could see it, then it was real. If it was, you know, if you couldn't see it, it wasn't real. Something like that. But uh, I tried that and it seemed to pass that test, you know, whichever way it was for that uh, particular test. And I was like, oh, this has got to be, you know, worth some money. So <clears throat> I went ahead and went to like a, a local coin shop. <clears throat> now this place was uh, actually, again, in a pretty affluent area and something that I could sit there and say, you know, oh, this is close by. I can go on my lunch break and kind of get it checked out. So walk into the joint thinking, all right, this, you know, this guy's going to tell me what it is. You know, is it worth money? Blah, blah, blah. So I walk in and, uh, you know, I... I asked the guy uh you know hey you know i think uh you know i found like a an old coin you know i just wanted to see kind of what it's worth so guy gets it this guy picks this up looks at it says doesn't say anything no he, he didn't say anything gets it and slams it on the counter like bing and it like flies off like onto the floor and i'm like sitting there like it was one of those uh, reactions where you're kind of <laughs> you're kind of in shock but also like it gets your blood boiling right off the bat because you're like um i'm not sure if that was just like super disrespectful was that an accident how did that happen um but uh, anyway this guy turns around and uh he's like he's like oh yeah that's fake and he's like that's fake he's like listen to the listen to the sound and again at the time i didn't really know the sound now the thing with this is that, um, you know, the times that I've pinged it, even to this day, I've sat there and listened to it, and it it sounds like, it sounds similar to silver. Now, it sounds slightly different, but it, it does sound similar. So, you know, again, for a constitutional piece, it's not like it's pure bullion, but the way that the guy did it, like, I was like, okay, uh, I'm never coming into, like, a coin shop of this, uh, of this type ever again. It was like basically like one of those uh, by appointment only. They don't have like really any showcase or anything. They just know it all's in there. But uh, 
it was definitely a very interesting experience very off-putting to just like wow like i don't want to ever visit a coin shop again like why would i want to come to a place like this like with uh you know people who act like that so never went back there ended up finding <clears throat> another coin shop which again the that particular area is a pretty affluent area here in california uh, especially los angeles area very affluent older people so like older um older area and there is a lot of you know there's a prevalence of coin shops especially compared to like the general population there's a good amount of coin shops in that area i think because there's a lot of interest uh from the older uh clientele and you know just if you have money that's something that you can obviously be into whether you're a stacker or whether you're a collector but uh, again very formative experience so yes i keep this around as a reminder of <laughs> the the journey uh, from stacking that I've been on uh, and you know to this day I look at it it does seem again like I haven't seen a real one so I don't know but I mean there's part of it that's uh, it's hard to explain you know you you feel it and you're like is the weight right for a constitutional coin and it does feel a little bit light compared to like a comparable um, I guess what would be comparable to this a half dollar something like that like, like a Morgan a Morgan would feel heavier than this. So I would assume that, yes, this is probably fake because of that. Uh, obviously, I took his word for it because uh, even though he was not the uh, nicest guy, it uh, definitely, you know, I would hope that at least at the end of the day, he knew what he was talking about. But yeah, those are the kind of things that are going to happen, you know, depending on what you're dealing with. It's not all roses and uh, rainbows when you're stacking. But uh, something else interesting. <clears throat> so as far as my last video, pretty interesting because, uh, again, everything that you were looking at there was generic bullion so that was just as a quote-unquote stacker uh that was you know silver is silver so nothing that i was concerned about you know mishandling or anything like that it literally was bullion rounds and uh you know junk silver and other stuff that's like there's no reason to you know give it the white glove treatment but uh interestingly I was looking through my stack the other day and I found that one of my tubes of collectibles actually had some, I'm assuming, tarnishing? I'm not sure if this is toning. I I'm assuming it's toning because real silver doesn't tarnish, right? Or if it does, it should rub off. But uh, I have a couple of tubes of these type of things. So... You're not supposed to handle your silver with your hands. Yes, I know. I try to keep it very minimal. But uh, these guys, a couple things like this, different characters like uh, Donald, Mickey, Minnie, uh, a few different ones, which is pretty cool. But uh, these were in tubes with uh, the anti-moisture uh, uh, little things in them. So I really take them out because they're all just sitting there. But I noticed in one of the tubes... A few of them had started to what would you call this tone and they're not in the light so they're not I mean they're in the dark they're, they're you know kept away and they did have the anti-moisture but it's interesting that I saw this you know toning or I'm assuming that's toning so I'm, I would think that that would happen if it was sitting in the light you know even if it wasn't getting moisture in it you know this little bit of toning the other interesting thing I was thinking about was you know like for example rust obviously silver doesn't rust but what I was thinking about when I was pulling these out and I was like wait this shouldn't have you know that kind of uh, tone to it because it's been you know kept away you know kept in the dark kept with the uh, anti uh, moisture but um, I was wondering to myself too to see as you can see this toning here matches up with the toning on this side so i was wondering like you know how when things rust if they're together the rust will spread you know spread around because rust is a living thing so i was like great do i need to take these out of the tube um i couldn't find a good answer you know as to what that is but again all interesting because these are the things it's you know you see these things every once in a while and you're just like the first time you encounter them you're like i have no idea if I should be doing this or that or the other thing with them. Whereas, again, the toning on, you know, these type of things like the JM bars or the angle hard bars, you know, you know, this kind of thing. Why am I going to worry about this stuff? It's, at the end of the day, it's a it's still a collectible. But I mean, the toning to me, it's 
even more character, you know, versus just something that's absolutely clean, like a clean finish, you know, coming out like, you know, like these guys or other things. I, I feel like, you know, it's not that big a deal with the, the, you know, generic bullion bars. They're still bullion bars, even though they're collectible. But uh, yeah, the my stack kind of has a little bit of everything um, and it is fairly large. I think I'm at four figures with uh, silver ounces uh, as far as the number of ounces. And, you know, we've got a couple dozen ounces of gold. So good amount of, you know, stack. But, um, you know, a lot of it's like fractional and small bars and different things. Again, because it's accumulated over time, you know, I wasn't about to go big and just, you know, go all in so that they could get hosed. At the end of the day, though, I mean, <clears throat> today's a sunny day, so it's always nice. It's always nice to look at gold in the sun. If you ever take your bullion out and go look at it in the light, it's so much more satisfying than looking at it inside or, you know, under a white light or whatever. I mean, even the small pieces of gold, the, the, the luster on it is just amazing. It makes, I mean, even silver looks pretty good when you, you know, bring it out into the actual natural light versus, you know, sitting in your room looking at it or, you know, wherever it is. The, uh, the safe deposit box where you keep all your bullion this kind of thing much more satisfying but yes again every stacker you're gonna go through journey and uh, it's not all again not all rainbows and sunshine but uh, that being the case that's what makes it fun if you don't have a story to tell what's the fun